Never given an official name, at least not by any of the paleontologists I've ever spoken to, there is a fossil, actually a slab of fossils, that has achieved icon status, and it's not even a dinosaur. In fact, it's not the fossil remains of anything, yet somehow this object has intrigued paleontologists, fossil lovers, and virtually everyone else who has laid eyes on it. Oddly, as impressive as this fossil is, it was never given a name. I could refer to it as the coolest, largest, busiest slab of climactic 90s trackways ever found, but that would take too long to say, so for the purpose of this video, I'll just call it Slugzilla. Images of Slugzilla have been used in publications and websites around the world to represent not just species or species, but such varied subjects as trace fossils, the Cambrian substrate revolution, Cambrian fossils, the colonization of land, and even fossils and paleontology in general. Everything from scientific journals to specialty magazines, book covers, newsletters, informational circulars, blogs, websites, and videos have shown or discussed it. And it has been used to liven up presentations for organizational meetings, high school and college research papers, and reports of supposed extraterrestrial life. So what is Slugzilla, and how did it become a fossil icon? You might remember the classic definition of fossil as the remains or traces of prehistoric life. Most fossils are of the remains, things like bones, shells, other hard parts, and much less often skin, eyes, internal organs, and other soft tissues. Traces are the physical evidence of an organism's locomotion, movements, or other activities. They include footprints, trails, trackways, burrows, borings, resting traces, nests, and excrement. Slugzilla is a series of traces, specifically trackways. As such, it is the trace of an animal as it traveled across a sediment surface. More specifically, Slugzilla is an example of Climactic Nites Wilsoni, which is a trackway consisting of two parallel ridges or rails connected by a series of raised crossbars. C. Wilsoni could be up to six inches wide and well over ten feet in length. They were usually curved with meandering paths. The animals that made C. Wilsoni lived in the intertidal zone, which is the region between high and low tide along parts of the coast of a warm sea that partially covered what is now much of North America and Greenland. Its fossils are known only from quarries and outcrops in Quebec, Ontario, New York, Wisconsin, Missouri, and Texas. It's generally believed to have been produced by a large, slug-like animal as it fed on the microbial mats that blanketed the shoreline. However, body fossils of the maker have not been found to confirm this interpretation. Its resting traces indicate that it had append no appendages or hard parts, and it was up to six inches wide and usually between one and two feet long. The fact that the maker of Climactic Nites Wilsoni was apparently spending part of its time out of the sea during Cambrian times makes C. Wilsoni a significant trace, because it means that it was one of the first animal traces made on land. But the intrigue of C. Wilsoni, which has been taking place since its discovery in Ontario in 1860, goes further than that. Not only is the maker's identity still uncertain, but the trackway's appearance is just plain bizarre. It looks like someone was riding a dirt bike on the beach, but much of it is raised up instead of pushed down, and this was over 500 million years before dirt bikes ever appeared. It's hard to imagine how any animal could have made such a strange looking trackway, but it did. Because of its age, unusually large size as compared to most other trace fossils, uncertain origin, and bizarre appearance, Climactic Nites Wilsoni had attracted much attention since 1860, but this was taken to a new level with the uncovering of Slugzilla. By the late 1990s, a series of quarries were turning up numerous surfaces that contained C. Wilsoni, as well as many other rare and important fossils. Together, those quarries in central Wisconsin have been unofficially named Blackberry Hill. 
Those companies are manufacturers of landscaping and architectural stone products. The largest and most prolific quarry is where Slugzilla was found. When the quarry workers uncovered it, a group of professional paleontologists who were studying the Blackberry Hill fossils convinced the quarry owner to work around the slab while it was being studied. The quarry owner kindly complied and avoided removing or damaging the slab. What pushed Slugzilla to the level of icon was both its size and the density of its trackways. It was about 10 feet wide and 15 feet long, larger before final trimming, and it was covered in winding, overlapping trackways. From a scientific standpoint, this was a gold mine. Its large number of data points, that is trackways, yield better statistical analyses and more opportunities to observe features not seen previously. Studying this massive slab, one could follow any trackway over the textured microbial surface as it wound around, crossing over the more obscure paths made previously. One could observe structural changes where the animals made sharp turns. One could see the crossbars come and go where the animal was apparently doing different things with its body. But what really made it stand out was its sheer size and drop-dead beauty. One couldn't stand in front of it and not be overwhelmed. At one minute it had an unworldly appearance, and the next minute you could look down and imagine yourself standing on the beach over 500 million years ago, trying to picture what kind of animals were apparently having a feeding frenzy at this very spot. The quarry workers continued working around Slugzilla for several years, while it was photographed and studied by paleontologists from all over the U.S. and abroad. Toward the end of that period, the inevitable development of lichen growth had begun. When the intense scientific interest subsided, word was put out for anyone interested in purchasing the slab. Of course, the magnitude and expense of the task of removing and shipping it would have been huge, and damage would have been unavoidable. There were no takers. Finally, in 2011, it no longer made economic sense to work around the slab. Slugzilla was then cut into pieces, some of which were sold. By 2016, the only evidence of Slugzilla that remained in the quarry was a pile of barely recognizable scraps. As quarrying operations have progressed over the years, the quarry floor has deepened and its walls have receded. The familiar landmarks that once surrounded Slugzilla are gone. The spot where it was once located now exists in space only. But although we can no longer stand before Slugzilla, and that will be sorely missed, we know that it has served its purpose and it will continue to do so. Because of the extensive photographic and literary records, casts, and presentations that draw from these resources, some of which are listed here, the magnificence of Slugzilla will continue to inspire many researchers to make more discoveries at the place, Blackberry Hill, that is fully equipped to further expand our knowledge of life from one of its more significant moments in deep time.